Chapter 21 There's no sign of the kits, Timberfur dipped his head to Crooked Star. Though it was nearly sun high, his pelt was still damp from the flood. The weak sunshine breaking through the clouds had done little to dry it, or warm the makeshift camp RiverClan had made on the slope above the island. Timberfur lowered his voice. Or Frog Leap's body. Leopardfur flinched. She should have insisted that Frog Leap be laid out somewhere safe while the burial patch drained. Instead, he had been washed from the camp along with the nests, the dens, and worst of all, the kits. She hadn't moved from where she'd lain down after she'd brought Robin Kits and Wood Kits' bodies back from the riverbank, her grief too heavy to bear. Mudfur and Stonefur had placed them gently in a small hollow above the camp and covered them with grass until they could be buried properly. Mistyfoot had watched them do it, her eyes dark with grief, as though anticipating the moment when Perch Kit and Pike Kit's drowned bodies would be carried home. She'd begged Crooked Star to let her search for them, but he'd told her to take care of her surviving kits and sent Black Claw, Loud Belly, and Timberfur to look for the others. Mistyfoot had led Primrose Kit and Reed Kit to a stretch of grass beneath the bracken and wrapped herself around them, her eyes on the river, scanning the banks in desperate silence. How had so many kits been lost? Leopard first swallowed back guilt. She did not dare go near the bush beyond the bracken where Mosspelt had made a nest for Dawn Kit and curled up in it, her back to the rest of the clan. Why couldn't I protect them? She had failed to protect so many of the cats she loved. Suddenly, Mudfur's prophecy that Leopardfur would save RiverClan seemed no more than the foolish dream of a fond father. Why had she ever believed it? Black Claw was pacing now in the small clearing of the makeshift camp, his pelt prickling along his spine, while the clan worked around him, weaving the bushes into dens and bundling reeds together for nests. I want to go back out, he growled, looking at Crooked Star. Perch Kit and Pike Kit were his kits too, and Leopard Fur understood his frustration. I know we didn't find them this morning, but we can't give up, he pressed. I should have swum after them as soon as they were washed away, he glared at Leopard Fur. Why didn't you tell me they were lost? She sat up, hollow with guilt. What could you have done, she murmured. The water was too fierce. She glanced toward the bush where Mosspelt was mourning Frog Leap along with her kits. Did you want Mistyfoot to lose you too? Crooked Star swished his tail. It'll do no good to blame each other for our losses. We must concentrate on rebuilding. He looked toward the camp. It was screened by the bracken, but every cat had seen the devastation. Water swilled over the clearing where River Clan's camp had been. The apprentices and warriors' dens had been washed away along with the nursery, and the elders' den stood, ruptured and bedraggled, its nest floating between the broken walls. Retail, Skyheart and Heavy Step, he mewed. Hunt for land prey up slope, he nodded to Cedarbelt. Take a patrol along the shore and look for fish stranded by the flood. Leopard Fur felt a surge of respect for Crooked Star. Since he'd woken on the riverbank, he'd had a new sense of energy and assurance, as though the new life he'd been given had restored the youth and confidence that seemed to have faded over the past moons. While she'd been frozen by grief, he'd been giving orders and reassuring the clan. Why hadn't she appreciated him earlier? She'd been so hungry to take his place that she hadn't realized how much she could learn just by watching him. He turned now to Black Claw. You must search for your kits until you find them, he mewed. She guessed he was thinking that Black Claw would be little use to the clan until he had found out what had happened to them. Leopard fur. For the first time that morning, he addressed her. Go with him and take stone fur, he ordered. Search the banks and inlets and pools. I want perch kit and pike kit brought home. She got to her paws. Even weighed down by grief, she could follow orders. Crooked Star padded close to her. Don't make the clan's loss your loss, he murmured. Let them do the grieving while you keep them safe. She blinked at him, then dipped her head. She could do that. At least she could try. 
She led Black Claw and Stonefur through the bracken toward the river. They picked their way around the outside of the flooded camp and took the path that led to the stepping stones. Although they would still be underwater, it would be the safest place to cross. As they neared the shore, she pricked her ears. She could hear cats mewing beyond the bushes ahead. Thunder Clan, she could smell their scent. She nodded a warning to Stonefur and Black Claw, and they stiffened. Stonefur tasted the air, his eyes widening. What's Thunder Clan doing here? Black Claw growled. You're an attack? Leopard Fur unsheathed her claws. Thunder Clan must have seen a chance to take advantage of River Clan's misfortune. Anger pumped energy through her muscles. She plunged through the bushes and burst out, snarling as she saw Fireheart and Graystripe on the shore. They recoiled as she landed in front of them. What are you doing here? She hissed. Stonefur and Blackclaw skidded to a halt beside her. Blackclaw drew back his lips. Why are you trespassing on our territory? He stopped, and Leopardfur followed his gaze. It had flicked toward two tiny bedraggled kits, huddled at Fireheart's paws. She stared at them, her heart pounding. Perch kit? Pike kit? They were barely moving, their eyes closed. She flattened her ears. What had the ThunderClan warrior done to them? Fireheart spoke. We're not trespassing, he mewed. We pulled two of your kits out of the river and wanted to bring them home. Black Claw's pelt was twitching. He was staring at the kits in disbelief. Stonefur padded forward and sniffed them. He glanced at Black Claw. It's true. His blue eyes widened. They're your kits. Relief and happiness flooded Leopardfur's pelt. This was the first blessing Star Clan had sent them in a moon. But she pressed it back and lifted her muzzle. She wasn't going to show weakness to Thunder Clan intruders. Black Claw clearly felt the same. He hadn't moved and his tail was lashing ominously. What are you doing with them? Leopardfur glared at Graystripe. Was this another of Thunder Clan's plots? Were you trying to steal them? Fireheart stared at her as though she was talking nonsense. Don't be such a mouse brain, he snapped. Why would we nearly drown ourselves to steal RiverClan kits? Black Claw thrust his muzzle toward Fireheart and snarled. If I find out you've hurt them, I'll- Black Claw. Leopard first sensed the situation was spiraling out of control. They couldn't fight here, there were kits. Back off, she told him. We'll let these cats explain themselves to Crooked Star and see if he believes them. She wasn't going to let them get away without a proper explanation. With a sharp flick of her tail, she beckoned Fireheart and Graystripe to follow her back to RiverClan's makeshift camp. Fireheart padded stiffly past her. All right, he mewed. I just hope your clan leader can see the truth when it's in front of his nose. Stonefur and Black Claw carried the kits past the flooded camp and up the slope beyond, keeping a watchful eye on Graystripe and Fireheart. Even if they had found the kits, why had the two ThunderClan warriors been near the river in the first place? She suspected Graystripe had come to check on Silverstream. But why bring Fireheart? Had Blue Star sent them to spy? Crooked Star must have spotted them approaching. He met them on the slope the half-built dens screened by the bracken. Silverstream slid out behind him with Graypool and Emberdawn. Leopardfur watched her closely as Graystripe stopped in front of the River Clan leader. The Silver Tabby's eyes gave nothing away as she watched the Thunder Clan Tom and his clanmate with the same coolness as Emberdawn. Crooked Star narrowed his eyes at Graystripe and Fireheart. Thunder Clan spies? His pelt rippled along his spine. As if we didn't have enough trouble. Black Claw and Stonefur placed Perch Kit and Pike Kit gently on the grass. They found Mistyfoot's kits, Leopardfur mewed. Silverstream ducked back into the bracken as she went on. They claim they pulled them out of the river. I don't believe a word of it, Black Claw spat. You can't trust a ThunderClan cat. Crooked Star sniffed Perch Kit, then nudged Pike Kit with his nose. They looked practically newborn, staring, their eyes open now, and frightened. They must be very cold and hungry. Graypool hurried toward them and wrapped her tail around them. 
My Steve, is coming, she whispered. As they began to wail, she pulled them close. Crooked Star's gaze flitted suspiciously over Fireheart and Graystripe. How did you come to have them? Fireheart glanced at Graystripe. Was that exasperation in his eyes? We flew across the river and broke into your camp without anyone noticing, he mewed sarcastically. Leopard fur flexed her claws. She should rake his muzzle for talking to Crooked Star like that, but before she could move, the bracken shivered and Mistyfoot burst through. She rushed to her kits, snatching them from Graypool as though the old queen had stolen them, and pressed them to her belly. As she began to lick them furiously, they pressed against her, mewling, clearly relieved to feel her warmth and familiar scent. Silver Stream slid out behind them, her gaze still cool as it flitted over Graystripe and Fireheart. Mudfur hurried out and began examining the kits, sniffing them anxiously as Mistyfoot washed them. Beetlenose, Lake Shine, and Otter Splash padded out behind him and watched the ThunderClan cats through narrowed eyes, not hiding their distrust. Crooked Star frowned at Fireheart. Tell us what happened, he ordered. Fireheart dipped his head and began to explain. Leopardfur let her hackles fall. At least the ThunderClan Tom was showing some respect as he told the RiverClan leader how he and Graystripe had found the kit stranded on a mat of debris floating at the river's edge. Blackclaw's tail was still twitching, but Leopardfur found herself convinced by Fireheart's story. If they'd wanted to steal the kits, why carry them to the flooded camp? There were quicker ways back to the ThunderClan border. Besides, why would ThunderClan want RiverClan kits? Especially in Leaf Bear, when a clan had enough trouble feeding its own. But Silverstream was the first cat to comment. It makes sense, she mewed. We saw them being washed away. It's believable that they were swept along the river to where you found them. Leopard first shifted her paws. She guessed that Silverstream was more interested in convincing her clanmates that Graystripe was innocent than in discovering the truth. But Graypool looked convinced too. And Beetlenose, Lakeshine, and Otter Splash were looking gratefully at the ThunderClan Toms. Only Blackclaw watched the ThunderClan Toms with any kind of hostility. He was probably angry that another clan had rescued his kits for him. Leopard Fur felt a twinge of sympathy for her clanmate. She knew that even though he must be thankful his kits were alive, his pride must be hurt. The sooner Fireheart and Graystripe left, the better. She was relieved when Crooked Star bowed his head. We're grateful to you. His mew was polite but grudging, as though he too was uncomfortable being indebted to another clan. Mistyfoot looked up, her gaze soft with gratitude. Without you, my kids would have died. Black Claw's ear twitched irritably. Fireheart dipped his head. Is there anything we can do for you? If you can't go back to camp and pray is scarce because of the flood, how dare he pity us? Leopard Fur watched Crooked Star without moving. Would he accept help from this arrogant kitty pet? We need no help from Thunder Clan, Crooked Star growled. She was relieved as he went on. River Clan cats can look after themselves. Don't be such a fool. Graypool's mew took Leopard Fur by surprise. She jerked her head toward the elder. You're too proud for your own good the old she-cat rasped. How can we feed ourselves? The river's too fierce to fish, and it's practically poisoned. You know it is. What? Graystripe exclaimed. Graypool explained. It's all the fault of two legs, she mewed. It's filthy with trash from a two-leg camp. The fish are poisoned, Mudfur added. Cats who eat them fall ill. Then let us help. Fireheart was gushing with good intentions. Leopardfur narrowed her eyes. Were all kitty pets this ignorant about warrior pride? We'll catch prey for you in our territory, he went on, and bring it to you, until the floods have gone and the river's clean. Didn't he care about the warrior code at all? Perhaps he didn't even realize he was breaking it. Leopardfur watched Graystripe, wondering if he'd object. Bluestar would never approve of her warriors giving ThunderClan prey to RiverClan. But Graystripe said nothing. Crooked Star's eyes glittered with suspicion. Would you really do this for us? Yes, 
Fireheart puffed out his chest, clearly pleased with himself. I'll help too, promised Graystripe. He looked at Silverstream. Leopardfur was relieved that she looked away. Then the clan thanks you, Crooked Star grunted. None of my cats will challenge you until the floods go down and we can return to our camp. But after that, we will fend for ourselves again. Leopardfur watched him turn away and hurried after him through the bracken. Are you really going to let them hunt for us? Her pelt prickled with unease. If they're foolish enough to break the warrior code for another clan, let them. He stopped as the bracken opened onto the makeshift camp. Vixen Leap and Shade Pelt were still working on the dens. Skyheart was carrying a soggy mouse to Moss Pelt's den. Crooked Star met her gaze. You can't deny that we need help. She held his gaze for a moment. No, she mewed. He was right. It would be foolish to let their clanmates go hungry because of pride. And Fireheart was taking the risk, not them. But anger pricked in her paws. How had River Clan become too desperate to be proud? Crooked Star padded away and began to help Vixen Leap thread a willow stem through the branches of a bush. Leopardfur watched him, her thoughts churning. Would Thunder Clan hold this over River Clan in the future? And how would it look to the other clans if they found out? She shook out her pelt. What would she have done in Fireheart's place? She frowned. She wasn't sure. She wasn't sure any other warrior would do what he had. Suspicion gnawed at her belly, and she glanced back at the bracken. Fireheart and Graystripe would be heading home. Were they really just trying to help? Chapter 22 In the quarter moon that followed, Perchkit and Pikekit recovered, and Crooked Star seemed stronger than ever. He took the lead in rebuilding the camp, organizing the gathering of willow and reeds to weave into dens and patch the camp wall, and left leopard fur to make sure the patrols brought back enough prey to feed the clan. While the work was being done, the clan slept in the temporary camp upslope. Leopard Fur wondered if Crooked Star was delaying the move back to the island, fearing the river a little more than before. She pushed the thought away. River Clan cats must never fear the river. It fed them and protected them from attack. It was their ally, not their enemy. But would Moss Pelt ever believe that again? It had stolen her mate and two of their kits, and she barely left her nest now except to fetch food for Dong Kit when she cried. Catching enough prey had been hard. There'd been a glut of fish at first, left stranded when the water had receded, but most had rotted before they could be eaten, and the flood had left the river empty of prey. The water meadow was still completely underwater and couldn't be hunted yet. Leopard Fur had found herself increasingly thankful for the prey Graystripe and Fireheart brought from the ThunderClan forest. But the more thankful she felt, the more resentful she became. It was humiliating to be so dependent on another clan. She slid from her nest, hidden among ferns, and glanced around the hillside camp. She was still sleepy after her nap and stretched to wake herself up. The morning patrol had taken her far upriver. She'd wanted to see if the fish were returning. There were one or two darting in the water, but she hadn't let the patrol catch them. Like the clan, the river needed the chance to recover from the flood. Then there would be more fish to hunt as Leaf Bear dragged on through another moon. Vixen Leap and Ember Dawn were sharing a vole beside their den in a laurel bush. Vixen Leap hooked a sliver of bone from between her teeth. I still can't believe Thunder Clan has been sheltering Broken Star all this time. She was still clearly unsettled by last night's gathering. Ember Dawn finished chewing. I thought Nightstar was going to have a fit. Leopard Fur padded toward them. He's broken tail now that Nightstar is Shadow Clan's leader, she reminded them. Ember Dawn frowned at her, puzzled. Does that mean he doesn't have nine lives anymore? Leopard Fur sat down. I guess not. At least the alliance between Wind Clan and Thunder Clan has been broken. 
Vixen Leap mewed. Did you see how mad Tallstar was at Blue Star? Crooked Star's the only one who stayed calm, Ember Dawn added. Broken Tail never threatened River Clan kits. Vixen Leap paused, catching Leopard Fur's eye guiltily. She must be worried that it was too soon to talk of kits while Moss Pelt was still mourning. Leopard Fur blinked at her reassuringly. I guess that's one thing we didn't have to deal with. It looked like there was going to be a fight, Ember Dawn mewed. The way the warriors were hissing at each other, and the leaders didn't even try to calm the situation. I thought Star Clan would cover the moon, but they didn't. Vixen Leap pushed the remains of the vole away, as though she were suddenly no longer hungry. Perhaps they wanted to see if the clans would fight. There would have been a fight if Crooked Star hadn't made sure Thunder Clan had safe passage out of four trees. Leopard Fur still felt the anxiety that had prickled through her fur as Crooked Star ordered River Clan to guard the Thunder Clan slope so that Blue Star could lead her warriors home. She'd been relieved that Wind Clan and Shadow Clan hadn't challenged them. I hope Shadow Clan and Wind Clan don't hold it against us, Vixen Leap fretted. I guess we had to support Thunder Clan. Ember Dawn's pelt twitched. After Fireheart and Graystripe have shared so much prey with us. Vixen Leap gave her a warning look. The Thunder Clan cat's gift of prey was a touchy subject with the whole clan. No warrior liked to depend on another clan. It's okay, Leopard Fur told her. We might as well admit it to ourselves, even if we can't let Thunder Clan find out. Why are Fireheart and Graystripe taking such a risk for us? Ember Dawn's eyes rounded with curiosity. Blue Star will have their pelts if she finds out they've been feeding another clan. Let's hope they're just being soft-hearted. Leopard Fur guessed that Graystripe was doing it out of concern for Silverstream, but that didn't explain why Fireheart was being so generous. Was he really just being a loyal friend? Or was he more like Tiger Claw, with a plan of his own playing out in the background? She pressed back a shudder. Her instinct told her that Thunder Clan was not to be trusted. And yet, without the daily deliveries of Thunder Clan prey, River Clan would have gone hungry. Leopard Fur paced along the shore and glanced through the forest toward the Thunder Clan border. Where are they? The sun was near the horizon, and Fireheart and Graystripe still hadn't appeared with the day's offering of prey. Stonefur and Beetlenose followed her gaze, their pelts twitching uneasily. Silverstream padded toward the trees, her eyes rounding with worry. I hope they're okay. Why wouldn't they be okay? Leopardfur grunted. They're only carrying a bit of prey through the forest. Silverstream blinked at her. They're carrying it across the border, she mewed. What if they've been caught? Leopardfur didn't care. The ThunderClan Toms had made a promise, and now they'd broken it. It was typical of ThunderClan. Perhaps they'd just wanted to make RiverClan depend on them so they could let them down. I don't know why I ever trusted them. Beetlenose flexed his claws. They're probably watching us right now, purring their whiskers off because they made us wait. Stonefur was frowning. Silverstream might be right. Leopardfur glared at him. Did he expect her to feel sympathy for Fireheart and Graystripe? Guilt pricked her belly. Perhaps she should. They had fed her clan, after all. Don't be pathetic, she told herself. She lashed her tail. Let's not wait any longer, she mewed. This might be a trap. Stonefur looked disappointed. Shall we hunt along the shore and see if we can catch something to take back to the clan? Good idea. Leopardfur began to follow the two toms as Stonefur and Beetlenose headed upriver. Silverstream called her back. Leopardfur, wait. She turned, surprised to see how worried Silverstream looked. The silver tabby's ears were twitching nervously. Did you tell them not to come? She asked Leopardfur as Stonefur and Beetlenose disappeared behind reeds. Why would I? Leopardfur tipped her head. I know you don't like taking prey from them. Silverstream mewed. And you hate Graystripe crossing the border. If I had stopped them from coming, I'd have been honest about it. Leopardfur was annoyed. I wouldn't have made Stonefur and Beetlenose wait for nothing. Silverstream looked again into the forest. Had she been hoping Leopardfur was the reason they'd not come? 
Anything else could mean Graystripe was in trouble, or that he'd broken his promise to her clanmates. Leopard Fur felt a glimmer of sympathy for this silver she-cat. I'm sure he's fine, she mewed. They probably had other duties today that kept them busy. She patted closer. It might be for the best. Part of her felt relieved. We can't keep taking ThunderClan prey forever. We need to fill our own bellies. Silverstream's eyes still glistened with worry. It'll be easier for you if he doesn't come anymore, Leopard Fur urged gently. It's time you started to get over him, Silverstream stiffened. I don't want to get over him, her anger took Leopard Fur by surprise. I'm having his kits. Leopard Fur felt the cold breeze reach through her pelt. What? She stared at Silverstream. This couldn't be true. You can't be. Yes, I can, Silverstream told her. She stared at Leopard Fur. No shame showed in her eyes. I'm having them, and I'm glad. How could you? Leopard Fur bristled with alarm. Don't you know the trouble this will cause? You might drag your clan into a fight. Don't be silly, Silverstream told her. When I have these kits, the truth will be between me and Graystripe. How can you be so dumb? Leopard Fur snapped. These kits will be half Thunder Clan. Where are you going to raise them? What if Graystripe claims them? He'd never do that. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Was Silverstream really that naive? How will you explain the kits to your clanmates? Leopard Fur's thoughts were spinning. You have no mate. I have Graystripe. You have no River Clan mate. How did Silverstream think this was going to play out? Do you think your clan mates will be happy to raise Thunder Clan kits? Do you think Thunder Clan will let you? We could end up at war over them. Who would go to war over kits? Silverstream snapped. They're mine and gray stripes. Our clans have nothing to do with them. Leopard first stared at her. How had Crooked Star raised such a mouse brain? Don't tell anyone you're expecting, she growled. They're going to notice, Silverstream retorted. Then don't say who the father is. I'm not denying my relationship with Graystripe, Silverstream's hackles lifted. I love him. What don't you understand about that? Her lip curled. Oh, I forgot. You think being deputy is more important than love, isn't it? Leopard Fur wanted to claw the silly young warrior's muzzle. Her words brought back a memory of Frog Leap's death and a fresh tear in her heart. But she pushed the feeling down, measuring her next words. Fine, she steadied her breath. I want you to end your relationship with Graystripe. Tell him you will never see him again. No, Silverstream glared at her. I can't do that. Then take yourself to ThunderClan, Leopard first snapped. Throw yourself on the mercy of those fox hearts. See how welcome they make you. She couldn't imagine ThunderClan taking this silver tabby in. Why would they? Silverstream clearly couldn't be trusted even by the clan she'd been raised in. Perhaps ThunderClan likes half-clan kits. Okay, Silverstream narrowed her eyes. I will. Leopard Fur froze as Silverstream went on. And I'll tell Crooked Star whose kits they are. I'll tell him I love Gray- No! Leopard Fur cut in. Didn't Silverstream realize she'd be exiled forever? RiverClan would have to throw her out. ThunderClan would never take her in. She'd become a rogue. I can't let that happen. She stopped her tail from trembling. Okay, she mewed. I won't tell anyone. You can sort it out in your own way. Just don't say anything to Crooked Star. She stared pleadingly at Silverstream. Keep quiet for as long as you can. Perhaps she could find a way around it. Perhaps if she broke the news gently enough to Crooked Star and carefully prepared their clanmates, Silverstream would be allowed to stay. But what about the kits? Would Graystripe let RiverClan raise them? Would Blue Star? Her heart was pounding. She'd been right all along to choose being deputy over love. Look at the trouble cats caused when they let their hearts make decisions. Chapter 23 Leopard first surveyed the camp. There were no puddles left in the clearing and the reed wall had been patched. 
She sat down and swept her tail over her paws, feeling pleased for the first time in days. The dens were freshly woven, and new nests, clean and dry, were ready for the clan's first night back on the island. It felt strange to see the nursery beside the elder's den, but it made more sense to build it on higher ground. Perch Kit and Pike Kit were playing moss ball outside. Primrose Kit and Reed Kit were wrestling nearby. It was almost as if the flood had never happened. Only Dawn Kit was still in the nursery, watching from the entrance. Her eyes were round, her fur fluffed out. She glanced back inside, as though wondering whether Moss Pelt would allow her to join in the other Kit's games. Leopard Fur wondered if she should talk to the tortoiseshell queen and remind her that Dawn Kit needed to play. Warrior skills begin in the nursery. Every clan cat knew that the games kits played were more than games. They were first steps every cat took on the path to their warrior naming ceremony. When kits played hide and seek or fought in play battles, they were practicing skills they would use every day as a warrior. It was important for kits to hone these skills in a non-threatening environment before they began their apprentice training. Dawn Kit put a tentative paw outside and, when her mother didn't call her back, took another step. Here, Primrose Kit saw her and batted the moss ball toward her. Dawn Kit's eyes lit up and she pounced on it, her small tail sticking up excitedly. Leopard Fur purred. I might be a leader by the time they get their warrior names, she thought as she watched the kits chase the ball, pushing each other and tumbling over. Her heart ached suddenly as she thought of the dangers these kits would face in the future. But the fish were returning to the river, the two-leg trash had been cleared away, a new leaf would come eventually. I'll protect them, Leopardfur told herself. Whatever comes, I'll protect them. The reed tunnel shivered, and she jerked her head around. Which of the morning patrols had returned first? Wind clan sent touched her nose. She stiffened. What was Wind Clan doing here? Sedge Creek padded into camp, and Leopard Fur flattened her ears as she saw Tall Star and Stag Leap behind her, flanked by Beetle Nose and Reed Tail. The kit stopped playing and stared at the Wind Clan cats. Who are they? Perch Kit whispered. Pike Kit padded forward a few steps. Are you Thunder Clan? He asked boldly. Tallstar swung his muzzle toward the dark gray kit and looked at him sternly. I'm Tallstar, he mewed. He's the Wind Clan leader, Perch Kit called out. The leader, Primrose Kit blinked, clearly impressed. Why is he here? Leopard Fur padded forward and narrowed her eyes. Why are you here, she asked Tallstar. You don't know, he met her gaze, his muse sour as though he'd come with a grievance. Fetch Crooked Star, Leopard Fur told Sedge Creek. The pale tabby dipped her head and hurried toward Crooked Star's den. He was waiting for us at the border, Reedtail explained. Unlike River Clan, Tallstar mewed, I ask permission to cross borders. Leopard Fur shifted her paws uneasily. Clearly the Wind Clan leader had come with a grievance. Don't Kit! Mosspelt appeared in the nursery entrance, her nose twitching anxiously. Her eyes widened as she saw Tallstar, and she darted out. I told you not to leave the nursery, she chided as she shooed Donkit inside. But I was bored, Donkit complained as she disappeared. Crooked Star was crossing the clearing, Sedge Creek at his heels. Tallstar, he stopped in front of the Wind Clan leader and nodded politely. His eyes glittered warily. What brings you here? Tallstar narrowed his eyes. There are river clan scents inside our border, he told Crooked Star. Stag Leap shot Leopard for an accusing look. She felt a rush of indignation, but forced her fur to stay flat. Crooked Star turned his head. Have you sent patrols across the border, Leopard Fur? He spoke lightly, as though he was sure she hadn't. Of course not, she told him. Why would she? Satisfied, he turned back to Tallstar. Neither have I, he mewed, his gaze unapologetic. Tallstar bristled. Are you accusing me of lying? No, Crooked Star mewed. 
But if River Clan warriors have crossed the border, it wasn't on my orders or Leopard First. And yet our prey has been taken. Tallstar's mew deepened. We've found blood near the scent line and the stench of your warriors near it. Leopard First thoughts were racing. She didn't think Tallstar was lying, which meant one of her clanmates had been taking prey from Wind Clan land. She didn't blame them. River Clan had been hungry. But she didn't like her clanmates deciding for themselves where to hunt, especially if it brought Wind Clan warriors to their camp. Tallstar looked at her directly now. There was a time when River Clan considered our land to be their land, he mewed pointedly. Perhaps they still do. She met his gaze. Arguing would only make River Clan seem cowardly. River Clan knows that the moor belongs to Wind Clan, she mewed. But after the hardships we've been through this past moon, I won't condemn my warriors for crossing the border in search of prey. Letting Kits go hungry seems to me to be a worse crime than trespassing, Stagleap growled. Or perhaps you're still hoping to give them a taste for more prey, she glared at him. Was he determined to turn this into a fight? She'd admitted that River Clan might be at fault. What more did he want? It won't happen again, she mewed stiffly. She'd make sure of that. There was no way she was going to be forced into apologizing to Wind Clan. They couldn't even keep hold of their own territory without Thunder Clan's help. Tallstar grunted. I'm worried that River Clan thinks that you established some sort of right to hunt on our land while we were gone. Crooked Star fluffed out his fur. Of course not, he mewed. There has clearly been a mistake. But we know the moor belongs to Wind Clan now, and we will respect your borders in the future. It's just a shame you didn't respect them in the past, Stagleap grunted. Leopard first swallowed back anger. Now that the river is back to normal and the flood water is gone, we have no need to hunt on your land. Need has nothing to do with it, Tallstar's gaze flicked toward her. No clan should be hunting on our land, whatever their need. Crooked Star lifted his muzzle. I'm sorry my warriors have trespassed. It won't happen again. And will the trespassers be punished? Tallstar growled. They broke the warrior code. If I find out who crossed the border, I will speak to them. Speak to them? Tallstar interrupted the River Clan leader. They should be put on den clearing duty for a moon. I will deal with my warriors as I see fit. Crooked Star's eyes narrowed. Are you sure you came here because of trespassing? He asked. Surely that could have waited until the next gathering. Why else would I come? Tallstar snapped. Perhaps you're angry with us for protecting ThunderClan at the last gathering. You and Nightstar seemed ready to claw their pelts off. That has nothing to do with it. Tallstar was bristling, and Leopardfur wondered if Crooked Star had touched a nerve. The Wind Clan leader had every right to resent Thunder Clan. They had claimed to be his ally while harboring the cat that had driven them from their home. It must have come as a shock to learn that Thunder Clan wasn't the friend Wind Clan had thought it was, and Crooked Star had been the only leader to defend Blue Star's actions at the gathering. Tallstar's resentment might have spread to include River Clan. She glanced at the Wind Clan leader. Surely he could see that River Clan wasn't anything like Thunder Clan. Thunder Clan only pretended to be honorable. They'd helped Wind Clan because it gave them a chance to feel superior and show off their power. Tallstar's tail was flicking ominously. If you're not going to punish the warriors that hunted on our land, then you should at least make up for the prey they stole. It's Leaf Bear, Crooked Star growled. How are we supposed to find extra? Crooked Star? A mew sounded at the camp entrance. Mistyfoot stumbled in, her eyes glazed with shock. Crooked Star turned to face her, his eyes wide as though she were a ghost. Mistyfoot, is it? Leopard Fur's belly tightened. Why did Crooked Star look fearful? What had happened? Tallstar and Stagleap turned to look at the River Clan Queen. Sedge Creek hurried to meet her. Silverstream, 
Misty Foot sounded like she could hardly say the name. Leopard Fur felt cold. Something bad had happened. Silver Streams, dead, Misty Foot mewed. Leopard Fur froze. Dead? How? Why? Thoughts flashed like lightning in her mind. Silverstream couldn't be dead. She was carrying kits. She looked at Crooked Star. He was staring at Misty Foot, barely seeing her. Silverstream? He swayed on his paws. Dead. Leopard Fur had to take charge. Let them do the grieving while you keep them safe. It was too late to save Silverstream, but she could get the clan through this tragedy. What happened? She asked Misty Foot. Misty Foot was staring in confusion at Tallstar, as though not knowing what to say in front of strangers. Tallstar dipped his head, clearly having decency enough to know that he was not wanted here. We'll talk about the border crossing another time, he mewed. I'm sorry for your loss. Crooked Star stared blankly as the Wind Clan leader turned and led Stag Leap out of camp. You'll get your prey, he mumbled, as though barely aware they'd left. Leopard first struggled to hold back panic. How had Silverstream died? Did I push her too hard into making a decision? Did she do something rash? Her heart pounded. Tell us what happened, she demanded, staring at Misty Foot. Misty Foot glanced nervously at Crooked Star. There was an apology in her gaze. Tell us, Leopard Fur ordered. Whatever the queen was going to reveal, Crooked Star would find out anyway. Misty Foot's eyes glistened with grief. She gave birth to Kits. Crooked Star stared at her, his eyes narrowed. Misty Foot went on. They fetched Cinderpaw, but Silverstream was bleeding too much. She swallowed. They couldn't. They? Crooked Star was staring at her. Who are they? Fireheart and Graystripe, Misty Foot told her. Anger fizzed beneath Leopard Fur's pelt. Fireheart and Graystripe? How were those two ThunderClan Foxhearts present at every one of RiverClan's tragedies? She knew Graystripe's connection to Silverstream, but why was the former kitty pet involved? What do they have to do with it? Leopardfur demanded, as the River Clan leader padded unsteadily toward Mistyfoot, his eyes bright with rage. Graystripe is the father, Mistyfoot mewed. Leopardfur's eyes jumped to her leader. So now the truth is out for every cat to see. How would he react? But Crooked Star didn't seem as angry as she would have expected. Perhaps grief had softened his fury. Instead, he looked lost. Where are they now? He mewed thickly. Graystripe took them to ThunderClan, Mistyfoot told him. A ThunderClan queen is nursing them. And Silverstream? Crooked Star sounded like he could hardly say the words. Graystripe buried her, Mistyfoot mewed. At Sunning Rocks. Leopard Fur's shock hardened into anger. He buried her? How dare he? By what right? She's not his kin. She's not even his clan. They didn't even hold a vigil for her. What kind of rogues were they? Didn't ThunderClan know that a warrior was supposed to have a vigil? Her pelt was bristling now. Rage fired through her. She was our clan mate, not his. What had made ThunderClan so arrogant? They'd protected WindClan while feeding their enemy, and now they were making decisions for RiverClan? And all the time, they acted like they were better than any other clan. How dare they deny RiverClan the chance to mourn Silverstream? She glared at Mistyfoot. He should have brought Silverstream and her kits home, where they belong. Home, Reedtail's pelt ruffled. ThunderClan kits don't belong here. Sedge Creek blinked at him. But they're only half ThunderClan. Half is too much, Reedtail growled. If ThunderClan wants them, they should keep them. He met Leopard Fur's gaze. And I won't be the only River Clan cat to say so. If they do, Crooked Star pushed himself to his paws and glowered at the pale gray Tom. They'll have to deal with me. 
Reed Tail dropped his gaze, but the fur was still prickling along his spine. Crooked Star looked at Mistyfoot. Take me to where Silverstream is buried, he mewed. We will hold a vigil for her there. Mistyfoot dipped her head and padded out of camp. Leopard Fur watched him follow her. I'll wait for the patrols to return, then bring the clan, she told him. She dreaded setting paw on sunning rocks. It was full of memories. Cats she'd loved had been killed there in battle. And now Silverstream had died and been buried there. I should have protected them better. Guilt wormed beneath her pelt. I should have looked after Silverstream. She'd tried, but she'd failed. She might even have driven the silver tabby to her death by forcing her to choose. Had she chosen Graystripe? Was that why she'd been at Sunning Rocks instead of with her clan? What would have happened if Leopard Fur had simply promised to support her no matter what she did? Leopard Fur closed her eyes. The river chattered beyond the reeds. A warbler was singing there. Perhaps Mudfur had been right to doubt her. Perhaps she wasn't cut out to be deputy. Her heart ached. I won't give up. She opened her eyes. Perch Kit was chasing the moss ball again, while Pike Kit and Primrose Kit chased after him. Silver Stream's kits should grow up here, beside their kin. They should learn what it was to be a River Clan cat. She unsheathed her claws. From now on, I'm going to get it right, she thought. I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep my clanmates safe. All of them. And she would begin by getting Silverstream's kits back from ThunderClan. The sun was dipping toward the horizon, bringing with it a chill that reached through Leopard Fur's pelt. Otter Splash and Pike Tooth were weaving reeds, putting the finishing touches on the warrior's den. Moss Pelt was sitting outside the nursery, picking apart a trout to give the softest flesh to the kits, while Mistyfoot watched distractedly. Around the clearing, the rest of the clan was settling down to its evening meal. But they were on edge. Every cat had one eye on the setting sun, and Leopard Fur couldn't sit still. Mistyfoot got to her paws. I'll be back soon with some new friends, she told her kits before she crossed the clearing and stopped beside Leopard Fur. Are you ready? Leopard Fur nodded. Yes. The past days had been difficult. The long vigil at Sunning Rocks had made her heart ache, and she hadn't been able to shake the thought that she could have prevented Silverstream's death. Mudfur had told her that if a birth went badly, there was little any cat could do. But perhaps if Silverstream had been at home instead of at Sunning Rocks with a ThunderClan apprentice as her medicine cat, she might have lived. Despite Crooked Star's threat, there had been a long argument in RiverClan about whether they should demand that ThunderClan return Silverstream's kits. Anger still churned in Leopard Fur's belly when she remembered how Reed Tail had been only one of many voices calling for the kits to be left with ThunderClan. But it was clear to Leopard Fur that Silverstream's kits belonged in RiverClan. No amount of ThunderClan blood would change that. How could her clanmates even think about letting ThunderClan raise RiverClan warriors? Thanks StarClan, Mosspelt had wanted them. She'd begged to be allowed to nurse them. And what cat would deny her after she'd lost Robin Kit and Wood Kit? After Mosspelt had spoken, even Reedtail had stopped arguing. But Blue Star had been even harder to persuade. She had sent Leopard for away the first time she'd led a patrol to ThunderClan to demand the kits back. But Leopard Fur had persisted, and the second time she'd gone to the ThunderClan camp, Blue Star had conceded that the kits should grow up in their mother's clan. Graystripe had promised to bring them at sunset, and now the fiery sun was sinking into the reed bed. Would he keep his promise? He was ThunderClan, after all. Crooked Star was already waiting at the camp entrance as Leopard Fur followed Mistyfoot around the clearing. Do you think ThunderClan has already named them? He asked as they padded out of camp. He sounded as anxious as an apprentice waiting for his assessment. Who cares? Leopard Fur mewed. We'll give them good RiverClan names, whatever they've been called in the ThunderClan camp. 
Mistyfoot glanced at her. We should give them names that suit them, not their clan. We need ThunderClan to know that they're ours, Leopardfur added toward the stepping stones. By the time they reached them, the moon was beginning to rise, and the river was a silvery ribbon that reflected the pale sky. In the twilight, Leopardfur could see Graystripe waiting on the other side of the river. Relief washed her pelt. He'd kept his promise. For the first time, she felt a twinge of sympathy for the ThunderClan Tom. It wouldn't be easy to watch another clan take his kits, but he'd made his nest when he'd become mates with a river clan warrior. Now he'd have to lie in it. She stopped and nodded Mistyfoot forward. You fetch them, she mewed. We'll wait here. The queen knew Graystripe better than she did, and she didn't want to spook him at the last moment in case he changed his mind. As Mistyfoot headed away, Crooked Star shifted his weight from one paw to another. She glanced at him. This would be the first time he'd meet Silverstream's kits. Was he scared he'd make the wrong impression? She felt a sudden rush of affection for him. He'd never been this nervous waiting for a battle. A few moments later, Mistyfoot was hopping back across the stones, a kit dangling from her jaws. Graystripe was following with the other one. She stopped as she reached Crooked Star and placed a small dark gray tom kit at his paws. His pelt was thick and long like the River Clan leader's, but his eyes were amber. As Crooked Star bent down to lick the kit's head, Graystripe hung back, the other kit wriggling as it swung beneath his chin. Leopard Fur beckoned him forward with a flick of her tail, impatience sparking in her pelt. He didn't move and she glanced nervously at Mistyfoot. Had the ThunderClan Tom changed his mind? He wants to speak to Crooked Star, Mistyfoot mewed softly. He can speak to both of us. Leopardfur didn't trust the ThunderClan Tom any more than she'd trust a rat. Both looked harmless, but were dirty and unexpectedly vicious. She glared at Graystripe, remembering all the heartache he'd caused her clan. Crooked Star blinked at him. We'll take good care of them, he promised. They will be safe and loved, and they'll grow into strong warriors. Graystripe padded closer. His eyes were glittering anxiously. Leopardford tensed. You can put the kit down and go, she mewed sharply. He leaned forward and dropped the second kit next to its littermate. It was a she-kit, as pretty as her mother, with blue eyes and a tail that promised to be like a plume of smoke. Crooked Star nuzzled her, purring. But Leopardfur was still watching Graystripe distrustfully. Say your goodbyes. She tried not to sound too sharp, but she didn't want him to linger. The longer this took, the more chance there was that he'd change his mind. Graystripe dipped his head, then looked earnestly at Crooked Star. Leopardfur saw the River Clan leader tense. Graystripe clearly had something important to say. I want to come with them, Graystripe mewed. Crooked Star looked puzzled. To the camp? Leopardfur cut in. It's better to leave them here, she mewed. You're not very popular in River Clan. I know. Graystripe's gaze didn't waver. And I don't care. I just want to be with my kids. I want to join River Clan. Leopardfur stared at him. Did he have bees in his brain? No way. She bit back the words. It was up to Crooked Star to tell this ThunderClan Tom that RiverClan didn't let enemy warriors join. She blinked at Crooked Star expectantly, but was surprised to see the old Tom gazing thoughtfully at Graystripe. Is he actually wondering whether to agree? Crooked Star, we should go, she mewed. The clan will be waiting to meet Silverstream's kits, and they won't be waiting for an ugly great Thunder Clan Tom. Crooked Star swished his tail, signaling her to be quiet. His gaze was still on Graystripe. Mistyfoot watched, her ears twitching anxiously. Are you willing to swear complete and unwavering loyalty to River Clan? Crooked Star asked Graystripe. Leopard fur bristled. What are you saying? Are you going to let him join? Crooked Star ignored her and went on. Will you hunt for River Clan? 
Will you protect River Clan? Will you fight for River Clan? Graystripe held the River Clan leader's gaze. Yes. Even against Thunder Clan? Graystripe swallowed. If it means being with my kits, yes, he mewed. I swear it. I loved Silverstream with all my heart. I always will. My kits are River Clan, and I will be too. Leopard first swallowed back outrage. This was madness. She had to reason with Crooked Star. He's a Thunder Clan warrior, she told him. He killed White Claw. I didn't kill him, Graystripe interrupted. It was an accident. He was still making excuses. Leopard Fur glared at Crooked Star. How can you trust him so easily? He could swear anything just to worm his way into our camp. You might as well invite a fox to sleep in the warrior's den. Crooked Star turned his emerald green gaze on her. The she-kit was sniffing his paws while the tom-kit padded beneath his belly. I believe him, he mewed. Some fathers will do anything to protect their kids. They won't need protecting. They'll be with us, Leopard first snapped. He wants what's best for his kits, Crooked Star mewed. For Silverstream's kits. If he's willing to give up his clan for them, doesn't that show his loyalty and his love, both for the kits and for Silverstream? Loyalty? Leopard first stared at him. How was switching clans loyal? Crooked Star was letting emotions sway him. Would he feel the same way if these weren't his daughter's kits? Had he decided to trust Graystripe just because Silverstream had? She curled claws into the ground. I think you're making a mistake, she growled. Crooked Star didn't meet her gaze. This is the best for the kits, and that's good enough for me. What about the rest of the clan? Leopard first swallowed back her objection. She could see that Crooked Star had made up his mind. Pressing back anger, she dipped her head to the River Clan leader. Okay, she mewed. Let's take the kits home. As Crooked Star picked up the she kit and Mistyfoot grabbed the tom, Leopard first shot Graystripe a warning look. She hadn't forgotten what had happened at the gorge, and she wouldn't be forgetting any time soon. She'd be keeping a very close eye on the ThunderClan Tom, and the first mistake he made that endangered her clan would be the last. Chapter 24 The full moon shone over the reed beds as though it had been guarding the camp while the patrol had been gone. Leopard Fur followed Crooked Star from the river, slowly making their way home. Stone Fur shook water from his pelt. They had taken their time returning from the gathering, relishing the breeze. It felt deliciously cool after another long, hot day. The blazing green leaf weather had brought prey and peace to River Clan, and Leopard Fur was pleased to see her clanmates trekking back to camp ahead of her, plump and sleek in the moonlight. Now that they had crossed the river, Leopard Fur felt it was safe to speak her mind without being overheard. Did anyone hear gossip about Tiger Claw? She blinked, hopefully, at Stonefur. He shook his head. Thunder Clan was tight lipped, he told her. They didn't say any more than Blue Star. And she only said that Tiger Claw had left Thunder Clan and Fireheart was her new deputy. Leopard Fur frowned. Did you ask Fireheart about it? Crooked Star's eyes gleamed in the moonlight. Of course, she replied, but he was evasive. He just said Tiger Claw was no longer a ThunderClan cat. He mostly wanted to know how Graystripe was. She glanced ahead to where the ThunderClan Tom was padding toward camp with her clanmates. It had been his first gathering as a RiverClan warrior, and she wasn't sure which had been harder for the ThunderClan Tom, leaving his kits or facing his former clanmates. She had to admit he'd tried hard to settle into his new clan. And though his fishing skills were still poor, he brought back more than enough land prey to make up for it. He pretended not to notice when Reedtail and Blackclaw refused to eat it. Tigerclaw can't be dead, 
Crooked Star grunted. They'd have told us. Yes, Stonefur nodded. It would be the easiest way to explain his absence. Leopard Fur had been unsettled by the news of Tiger Claw's disappearance. She remembered his behavior in the battle over Wind Clan, how ruthless he'd seemed, how manipulating. And yet she had once felt a true connection with him. He was the only cat she'd ever met who'd been willing to talk about a different future for the clans and what their places might be in it. She'd quietly looked forward to seeing him at gatherings, wondering each time what he would do or say. And while she hadn't fully trusted him in many moons, she'd still imagined herself becoming leader alongside him. It was hard not to admire his forward-thinking determination. The clans need fresh energy to sweep away old beliefs. She still agreed with that. But now that he was gone, who would help her shake things up? She glanced at Stonefur. I don't know why Blue Star didn't tell us everything, she swished her tail. Tiger Claw's disappearance might affect us all. Stonefur's eyes were dark with worry. Could it be linked with the rogues that have been seen in the forest? Leopardfur looked at Stonefur, surprised. Not long before Graystripe and his kits had joined RiverClan, she had been part of a group of RiverClan cats sent to help ThunderClan fight off a group of rogues. The cats had been strong fighters for rogues, but could they best Tiger Claw? Crooked Star pricked his ears. How? Perhaps they kidnapped him, Stonefur guessed. Why would they? Leopardfur glanced at him. The Gray Tom was grasping for butterflies. Besides, I can't imagine rogues would be able to hold a warrior like Tiger Claw. He might have caught the sickness that's been hurting Shadow Clan, Stonefur mute. Maybe Thunder Clan sent him away to stop it spreading. That would be harsh, even for Thunder Clan, Leopardfur mute. But why keep the reason for his disappearance a secret? Stonefur looked puzzled. Crooked Star grunted. There's no point in guessing, he mute. I'm sure Blue Star has her reasons. He hurried ahead and caught up to his clanmates. Leopard first sighed. She'd been hoping he'd say something about a kitty pet becoming Thunder Clan's deputy. The thought made her claws itch with annoyance. She hadn't forgotten that Fireheart had been present at the scene of Silverstream's death, or the strange scene when he and Graystripe had turned up during the flood with Pike Kit and Perch Kit. She had appreciated the prey they'd brought then, but knowing what had come afterward, she couldn't help but question their motives. Besides, how could a kitty pet lead warriors? And Fireheart was so self-righteous. He acted like he wouldn't take prey from a kit. But he'd clearly been quietly working to become Blue Star's most trusted warrior. At least Tiger Claw had been honest about his ambition. Leopard first shuddered at the thought of standing next to Fireheart on the Great Rock one day. A kitty pet, for Star Clan's sake. How humiliating. Standing beside Tiger Claw would have been far more dignified. The juicy carp between leopard fur's jaws was making her mouth water. Otter Splash and Black Claw padded beside her, holding their catch. The hunt had gone well, but then it was hard not to catch fish when the days were so warm. The carp had practically swum into her mouth. Otter Splash stopped as they neared the camp, and leopard fur stiffened when the sleek ginger she-cat dropped her fish and looked around, her nose twitching. What do you smell? Leopardfur laid her own fish on the ground. Blood. Blood. Before she could taste the air, the reeds rustled behind them. Graystripe padded out. His pelt was ragged where a clump of fur had been torn out. Stonefur and Skyheart were with him, their muzzles scratched, their ears torn. Fetch mud fur. Leopardfur told Blackclaw. She darted toward the patrol, sniffing their wounds anxiously. What happened? We were patrolling near four trees, Stonefur told her. His ragged ear was twitching. We heard yowling and went to check. A Thunderclan patrol was being attacked by, he hesitated, his eyes glittering. By rogues. Why did he look so shocked? We know rogues are roaming the forest, she mewed. Stonefur shivered. Tiger Claw was with them. Tiger Claw? Her gaze flitted to Graystripe. Did you know about this? His pelt ruffled. 
Why would I know? Because you're a Thunder Clan. The words were on the tip of her tongue, but she bit them back. Even she had to admit that he had been a loyal River Clan warrior since he joined them, at least as far as they knew. She looked back at Stonefur. Did you drive them off? Of course, Stonefur shook out his pelt. But they fought hard. Tiger Claw had clearly taught them warrior moves. Leopard Fur's belly tightened. Why would Tiger Claw attack his own clan with a bunch of rogues? She didn't expect an answer. She could barely believe it was true. Something must have driven him to it. She looked at Graystripe again. He must know more than he'd told them about what had gone on in the ThunderClan camp. Why did Tiger Claw leave ThunderClan? She demanded. I don't know. Graystripe held her gaze, but she could see he was uneasy. His ear was twitching. Did he say anything before he left? She pressed. Something that might explain why he's fighting alongside rogues? He didn't say anything. Graystripe dropped his gaze. He just left. Was he telling the truth? You're a River Clan cat now, she growled. You can't keep Thunder Clan secrets if it means putting River Clan in danger. Graystripe shifted his paws. I really don't know what Tiger Claw is up to or why he's fighting alongside rogues. Black Claw was hurrying back from the camp with mud fur. The medicine cat held a leaf wrap and cobweb in his jaws. He slid past Leopard Fur and began examining the injured patrol. Sit down, he told Skyheart, and began smearing a poultice from the leaf wrap onto the deepest claw marks beside her muzzle. Leopard Fur frowned. She needed to tell Crooked Star. It was one thing having rogues in the forest. It was another if they were led by Tiger Claw and using warrior battle skills. What could the former ThunderClan deputy be up to? Her pelt ruffled. She couldn't help feeling there was something Graystripe wasn't telling her. Tiger Claw had only wanted the best for his clan. Why would he leave? He'd been planning to become leader and make the clan stronger and better than they'd ever been. Why would he attack them? And with rogues? Her tail quivered. None of this made sense. Leopard fur lifted her head. An acrid scent had woken her. She blinked and stared into the darkness. What was it? Leopard fur, Loudbelly called through the entrance. His mew was taut. The other nests rustled. Sedge Creek and Vixen Leap jerked awake. Leopard fur scrambled from her nest. What's happened? Quick! Loudbelly ducked outside, and Leopard fur followed him. The night air was tainted with the smell of smoke. The dark brown Tom blinked at her, fear in his eyes. There's a fire. Where? Leopard fur flinched as a bolt of lightning streaked across the sky. The other side of the river. Loudbelly stared at the trees beyond the reed beds. As Leopard fur followed his gaze, thunder rumbled over the forest. Beyond the river, an orange glow lit the sky. The clan began to hurry from their dens, looking around in alarm as smoke drifted across the camp. Graystripe was already awake, pacing in front of the nursery. There's fire in the forest, Leopard Fur told them. But it can't leap the river. Graystripe blinked at her. What about ThunderClan? Crooked Star was crossing the clearing. Is every cat safe? Yes, Leopard Fur hurried to meet him. There's a fire, but it's on the other side of the river. ThunderClan is in danger, Graystripe mewed. We must... Crooked Star broke off, coughing as smoke billowed around him. Graystripe's pelt was bristling with panic. We have to help them! You want us to run into a fire? Loudbelly stared at him as another flash of lightning lit the ThunderClan warrior's frightened face. We can't let them die! As thunder rolled around the sky, Crooked Star recovered himself. Take a patrol to the river, he told Leopard Fur. See what you can do. Gratitude glowed in Graystripe's eyes. Leopard Fur nodded. She still didn't trust Graystripe, but she could imagine what it felt like to see the clan you'd been born into in crisis. Thunder Clan wasn't their ally, but no warrior should be left to die in a fire. Graystripe, Black Claw, Loud Belly, she mewed. Come with me. Mudfur, she nodded to her father. You come too. There might be injured cats. And Heavy Step, I want you with us. As the young Tom hurried to join the patrol, Leopard Fur sprinted out of camp. 
she led them through the darkness toward the river and burst out on the bank. ThunderClan's forest was burning. Between the trees, Leopardfur could see the orange glow of fire and hear the roar of it, like a storm howling toward the river. ThunderClan warriors were pacing the shore. Some had already waded in and were struggling to cross. Help them, she ordered. Heavy Step dived into the river. He grabbed a floundering ThunderClan she-cat by the scruff and dragged her back to the bank. Black Claw splashed through the shallows and helped the tom from the water. Running Wind was struggling toward the shore. Leopard Fur waded in and put her shoulder beneath his, guiding him onto dry land. A yowl made her turn. Further upstream, orange fur flashed in the water. Fireheart was holding an elder, the current sweeping them rapidly downstream. His eyes flashed with panic, and he disappeared beneath the surface as the elder fought to keep his muzzle above the water. A River Clan kit could swim better. Leopard fur splashed through the shallows as they sped toward her and dug her paws into the mud. Bracing herself, she reached out and grabbed the elder as he swirled past. She turned and dropped him near the shore, then turned back to grasp Fireheart's scruff between her teeth. With a growl, she hauled the ThunderClan deputy onto the slippery bank and held on until he'd found his paws. Thank you, he spluttered, pulling free. The bedraggled elder coughed up water beside him, but Leopardfur was scanning the river for more ThunderClan cats. Maybe it's time ThunderClan learned to swim, she grunted. She couldn't see any more pelts in the water. Is that every cat? She asked Fireheart. Water was streaming from his whiskers. He took a moment to catch his breath, then looked along the River Clan shore, where his clanmates were huddled like frightened mice. I th think so, he stammered. What about that one? A black and white shape lay unmoving on the far shore. The ferns beyond it were on fire. That's Patchpelt, Fireheart was trembling. He's dead. Leopardfur pushed out into the river. She wasn't going to leave a warrior's body to be burned. It deserved a proper burial. She crossed the river, dodging the sparks that popped and fizzed in the water around her, snatched the dead tom from the shore, and paddled back through the black water. Lightning arced overhead. Thunder cracked, and Fireheart flinched. But Leopardfur didn't stop swimming. She hauled Patchpelt's body onto the shore and laid it at Fireheart's paws. A growl rose in her throat. Graystripe was weaving around the ThunderClan deputy like a kit who'd just found its mother. Separation had clearly done nothing to diminish their friendship. Leopardfur narrowed her eyes, but said nothing. It would keep. She noticed Blue Star lying on the bank a few tail lengths away. The ThunderClan leader wasn't moving. Had she lost a life? Leopard fur padded toward her and sniffed her wet pelt. The old she-cat was breathing, but she looked like no more than a bundle of fur and bones. Rain was beginning to fall. Great heavy drops that promised a downpour, and wind was blowing the sparks and smoke back toward the forest. They would be safe now. Leopard fur glanced at Patchpelt's body. Come on she mewed to Fireheart. We'll bury him back at camp. He blinked at her, confused. The River Clan camp? His words burst forth a new flood of rage in her heart. All she could think of was Silverstream, and how he'd arrogantly helped to bury her body at Sunning Rocks rather than give her clan the chance to mourn and bury her. She was better than that. Unless you'd prefer to return to your own. Thank you. As he dipped his head, Cinderpelt crouched beside Blue Star. She swallowed a lot of water, the ThunderClan medicine cat mewed. Leopardfur called to Mudfur. Come and check on Blue Star. He'd had more experience with half-drowned cats than Cinderpelt. As Mudfur hurried off, Fireheart began to move among his warriors, checking for injuries and making sure they could walk. Leopardfur watched him. He was worried about his clanmates, which was impressive for a kitty pet. But he still irritated her. She waited as the ThunderClan cats gathered themselves. Mudfur helped Blue Star to her paws. Graystripe lifted Patchpelt's body in his jaws. Ready? Leopardfur nodded to Fireheart. Yes, Fireheart replied. She turned and began to lead the smoke blackened and drenched ThunderClan warriors back to camp. The rain was falling heavily as they reached it, pounding the river and drenching the dens. 
Crooked Star was waiting for them in the clearing. His eyes were roomy and his pelt was ruffled, and Leopard Fur wondered if he'd been coughing again. He scanned the ThunderClan cats, then looked at her anxiously. Is River Clan safe? The fire won't cross the river, she told him. He looked relieved as she added, especially now that the wind has changed. Crooked Star blinked expectantly at Blue Star as Cinderpelt and Mudfur guided her into the camp. She looked at him hazily, but before she could speak, Fireheart stepped forward. Leopard Fur and her patrol showed great kindness and courage in helping us flee the fire, he mewed to Crooked Star. Above him, lightning flickered across the sky and thunder rumbled in the distance, rolling away from the forest. Crooked Star dipped his head. Leopard Fur was right to help you. All clans fear fire. Our camp was burned, and our territory is still on fire, Fireheart went on, blinking away the rain that streamed into his eyes. We have nowhere to go. Was he throwing himself on the mercy of River Clan? Leopard Fur narrowed her eyes. At least he was ready to admit his clan's weakness. Crooked Star watched him for a moment, then spoke. You may stay until it's safe for you to return. Fireheart blinked at him gratefully. Thank you. Leopardfur glanced at Graystripe as he laid Patchpelt's body at the edge of the clearing. She wondered how he felt, surrounded by former clanmates. Was he pleased to see them? What did they think, seeing him in his River Clan home? Rain was soaking Patchpelt's body, and Leopardfur felt a twinge of pity for the dead warrior. She looked at Fireheart. Would you like us to bury your elder? You are very generous, Fireheart answered. But Patchpelt should be buried by his own clan. Leopardfur bristled, by his own clan. He'd let Graystripe bury Silverstream at Sunning Rocks. Didn't he think she would have liked the same respect? Very well, she mewed sharply. I'll have his body moved outside camp so that your elders may sit vigil with him in peace. She glanced at Blue Star. The ThunderClan leader was huddled on the ground and looked pitiful beside Crooked Star. Surely she'd coughed up the water by now. Is Blue Star injured? She asked Fireheart. The smoke was very bad. There was something careful in his tone. She was among the last to leave the camp. He dipped his head politely. Excuse me, I must see to my clan. Leopardfur watched him pad away, her ears twitching. Was he trying to hide something? As she wondered what it could be, she noticed Graystripe checking on the ThunderClan cats. The gray warrior leaned close to each one, speaking softly, like a concerned medicine cat. He moved among them with an ease that was disconcerting. The ThunderClan cats were outsiders here, and yet he seemed as relaxed with them as he did with his own kits. She shifted her paws uneasily. Would he ever become a true RiverClan warrior? The next day, the weather cleared. The ThunderClan cats still smelled of smoke despite the rain. Leopardfur kept to the edges of the camp, observing them with interest. She noticed how careful Cinderpelt was to keep the other cats away from Blue Star, though she asked for no herbs to treat the ThunderClan leader. She also noticed that Graystripe had left camp even before she'd assigned the patrols for the day. He'd returned with prey for his former clanmates. He'd even taken Fireheart to the nursery to show off Featherkit and Stormkit. Should she have stopped him? She wanted to keep the taint of ThunderClan from Silverstream's kits as much as she could. After Sunhigh, Crooked Star beckoned to her from outside his den. She hurried to meet him. I think it's time we spoke to Blue Star, he mewed. The ThunderClan leader was lying in a patch of sunshine beside the camp wall. Cinderpelt hadn't left her side and was watching her own clanmates as warily as River Clan. If we can get past Cinderpelt, Leopardfur muttered. She followed Crooked Star across the clearing. The medicine cat looked up as they reached her. How is Blue Star? he asked. Recovering, she mewed. Blue Star opened her eyes and sat up, fluffing out her pelt. She seemed fine, her sky blue gaze fixing on him. Thank you for taking us in, she mewed. The fire should be out by now, he told her. After so much rain, was he hinting that it was time ThunderClan should leave? 
I'll send a patrol to check, she mewed. Graystripe was heading toward them as Fireheart watched from the camp entrance. He dipped his head to Crooked Star as he neared, but before he could speak, Blue Star hurried to meet him. Graystripe, there you are, she sounded pleased to see him. Will you take a patrol to check the camp, she mewed. We should make sure it's safe before we return home. Leopard Fur narrowed her eyes. Blue Star was addressing him like a clanmate. Had she forgotten he wasn't a Thunder Clan warrior anymore? Graystripe's pelt ruffled uneasily. Fireheart has already suggested it. He seemed to be searching Blue Star's gaze. Was he wondering if she'd forgotten too? But I need Crooked Star's permission to go with him. Blue Star frowned, then glanced at Cinderpelt as though for reassurance. Cinderpelt blinked at her soothingly. Fireheart will check the camp, she mewed. May I go with him? Graystripe asked Crooked Star. Sure, Crooked Star nodded. Leopardfur blinked at him. Are you sure it's a good idea? She wasn't as trusting as Crooked Star. It might be better if he remembers his old home the way it was before the fire. But Crooked Star whisked his tail. If we want to go, let him. As the two friends headed out of camp, Leopardfur frowned. They shouldn't be left alone. What was to stop Graystripe telling Fireheart about Riverclan's patrols and defenses? Even if he didn't mean to, he might let something slip while they were chatting, especially if Fireheart asked the right questions. She moved to follow them, but then stopped. She was needed here, and Fireheart would surely turn her away, rather than allow the deputy of a rival clan to see how devastated their territory must be now. Still, she paced, unable to settle until Graystripe and Fireheart returned and reported that the ThunderClan camp was safe. They'd buried the few cats who hadn't made it out, and since the rest of their clanmates were all well enough to walk, Blue Star decided it was time to return home. As the ThunderClan cats circled impatiently in the growing darkness, Blue Star padded toward Crooked Star. Leopard first swallowed back a growl as she saw Fireheart lick Graystripe's shoulder and share a few final words before hurrying to take his place beside his leader. Thank you for your kindness and for sharing your prey, Blue Star mewed. Crooked Star dipped his head. We are all warriors at heart, he mewed. He sounded breathless, and Leopard Star wondered if the smoke he'd inhaled was still bothering him. She should ask Mudfur to take a look. Blue Star lifted her tail. Thunder Clan is in your debt. Leopard Fur's ears pricked. She narrowed her eyes. It was a debt she would not forget. River Clan had been generous to the clan that had stolen Sunning Rocks and caused the deaths of White Claw, Sunfish, White Fang, and Silverstream. And yet she suspected that only she and Star Clan truly realized how much Thunder Clan owed them. One day, River Clan would ask for something in return. And when they did, she hoped that Thunder Clan would be prepared to honor Blue Star's promise. Chapter 25 Deadfoot, Leopardfur dipped her head to the Wind Clan deputy. The bright moonlight shining into the four trees clearing gleamed on his black pelt. The air was cold with the first chill of leaf fall. And around them, Wind Clan and River Clan cats mingled, chatting as they waited for Thunder Clan and Shadow Clan to arrive for the gathering. Leopardfur, Deadfoot acknowledged her in return with a stiff nod. There's no need to be so formal. Leopard first swished her tail. Was Wind Clan still holding a grudge just because a few of her warriors had strayed onto their land? She and Crooked Star had never been able to figure out which warriors had done it, distracted as they were by Silverstream's death and Graystripe's arrival with the kids. We've repaid the prey that was taken. Stolen, Deadfoot corrected. He lifted his chin. Have the warriors who stole it been punished? There's no need to punish them, Leopardfur lied, scanning the slopes. Where were ThunderClan and ShadowClan? They won't do it again. The WindClan deputy was clearly determined to be prickly. ShadowClan and ThunderClan hadn't arrived yet, but she wasn't looking forward to chatting with their deputies either. Suddenly she wished Tigerclaw were here. She missed him. She was still troubled by the news that he'd been fighting with rogues. When and why had he left ThunderClan? 
Crooked Star looked frail on the great rock beside Tall Star. He hadn't recovered from breathing smoke from the fire and coughed more now than ever. Now he simply looked tired, even though the gathering hadn't started. As she wondered if Blue Star had recovered, the bracken rustled on the far slope and ThunderClan streamed into the clearing. Leopard Fur narrowed her eyes. Fireheart was leading the patrol. Had Blue Star died? Her ears twitched nervously. What would Star Clan think of a kitty pet leading Thunder Clan? Surely they wouldn't approve. She sighed. When Tiger Claw had spoken to her about needing new ideas to lead the clans, surely this was not what he'd meant. Had this kitty pet's ambitions played a part in his leaving Thunder Clan? Excuse me, Leopardfur nodded politely to Deadfoot and crossed the clearing nosing her way through the crowd. She stopped as she reached Cinderpelt. She wanted to speak to the ThunderClan medicine cat before the gathering began. Where's Blue? Mudfur interrupted. Don't worry, he mewed. Blue Star's fine. She's still recovering from the fire, Cinderpelt told her. Leopardfur felt puzzled. But she wasn't injured. She just seemed confused. She breathed a lot of smoke. Cinderpell looked at the great rock. Crooked Star was crouching beside Tall Star, his eyes half closed. It looks like Crooked Star is still feeling the after effects too. Leopard Fur's pelt ruffled. Clearly, the ThunderClan medicine cat was gently warning her not to ask any more about Blue Star. Was she trying to hide something? Leopard Fur noticed Fireheart scanning the clearing. Was he looking for Graystripe? Leopard Fur felt a twinge of satisfaction. She had told the former ThunderClan warrior not to come tonight. His concern for his former clanmates in the RiverClan camp had worried her. He was still a little too close to them for comfort. Dark pelts moved through the ferns on the slope behind her. Shadow Clan. They brought more warriors than usual. Did that mean they'd finally recovered from the sickness? Where was Nightstar? She frowned. There was no sign of the Shadow Clan leader and some of the faces among the warriors looked unfamiliar. Then, suddenly her eyes landed on a face she recognized. But what? How? Her eyes widened as she stared at Tiger Claw. What was he doing here, among the Shadow Clan cats? Was he planning to disrupt the gathering? Interest sparked in her pelt as she watched him shoulder his way through the other clans. He was heading toward the Great Rock. Something unusual was going on here. Leopard Fur nodded quickly to Mudfur and Cinderpelt and ducked away through the crowd. As she reached the Great Rock, she was surprised to see Blackfoot sitting beside Deadfoot. He'd been exiled with Broken Star. What was he doing here? Where was Cinderfur? Leopard Fur's ears twitched. And why hadn't Fireheart joined the other deputies? What was going on with Shadow Clan and Thunder Clan? Blackfoot nodded to her politely, then turned his gaze toward Tiger Claw. Surprise sparked through Leopard Fur's pelt as the dark warrior leaped onto the great rock. Murmurs of shock rippled around the gathered cats as Tiger Claw stared down at them. I'm pleased to be here with you at the gathering this night. He spoke with quiet authority. Leopard Fur pricked her ears as he went on. I stand here before you as the new leader of Shadow Clan. Nightstar died of the sickness that took so many of his clan, and Star Clan has named me as his successor. Shadow Clan's leader? As Leopard first stared, Fireheart leaped up beside him. Our leader breathed smoke in the fire, the Thunder Clan deputy told the cats below. She's not well enough yet to travel, but she'll recover. Leopard Fur's thoughts were spinning. Was this how it would be now? Tiger Star leading Shadow Clan and Fireheart standing in for Blue Star? And Fireheart was dipping his head to Shadow Clan's new leader as though he was fine with it. She felt a glimmer of excitement mingled with trepidation. Was this Tiger Star's new way to shake up the clans? If so, what was his ultimate goal? And how would it affect River Clan? Crooked Star looked suddenly old beside the two young warriors, and Tall Star seemed small. 
Leopard fur shifted her paws, curiosity flickering in her chest. Despite her concerns about what all of this meant, one thought kept echoing in her mind. What would it feel like to be up there too? Crooked star, Leopard fur poked her head into the River Clan leader's den. She had hoped to talk to him last night about Tiger Star's reappearance and his leadership of Shadow Clan, but he'd seemed so worn out by the gathering that she'd let him walk home in companionable silence. This morning, she hoped a good night's sleep would have restored him, but she found Mudfur with him. Worry sparked in her belly. Are you okay? She asked Crooked Star as she slid into the den. Just tired, he answered. He coughed, and Mudfur put his ear to the River Clan leader's chest. You should rest some more, Mudfur told him. I'll bring you some tansy to chew, he glanced at Leopardfur. Can you manage the clan today? Of course. She let him guide her from the den. Will he be okay? She asked, glancing toward the trailing moss entrance. If he rests, Mudfur was frowning. I'll make sure he's not disturbed. She felt suddenly anxious. She knew that one day Crooked Star would lose his last life, but was that day soon? Am I ready? She'd been observing him closely these past moons, trying to learn all she could from him. But there was much more to learn. She just hoped Star Clan would give Crooked Star time to teach her. If not, I must be ready. She padded across the clearing as Mudfur headed to the medicine den. Whatever happened, she must protect her clan. The reed tunnel shivered, and Black Claw padded into camp. His pelt was rippling along his spine as he glanced uncertainly over his shoulder. Something was worrying the Tom. Black Claw? As Leopard Fur headed to meet him, a dark figure padded into camp after him. Tiger Star? She was surprised that he'd come alone. He was waiting at the border. Black Claw explained. He wants to speak with Crooked Star. Crooked Star's resting, she met Tiger Star's gaze. I can give him your message. Tiger Star tipped his head to one side. If Crooked Star isn't able to talk, perhaps I can speak to you instead. His gaze flicked to Black Claw. Alone. Leopard Fur frowned. Could she deal with the powerful tabby warrior by herself? Of course she could. She'd talked to him plenty of times before. She padded out of camp, signaling for him to follow, and led him to a quiet spot on the riverbank, where reeds screened them from the path. What is it? She lifted her chin. He blinked at her calmly. I just wanted to tell you that Shadow Clan's sickness has eased. Running Nose is treating the last few cases. We've had no new ones for a quarter moon. I'm glad to hear it. Leopard first searched his gaze. It seemed a long way to come to share news he could have shared at the gathering last night. I also wanted to tell you that Shadow Clan will carry on being a friend to River Clan, Tiger Star went on, as we have for many moons. If you want to renew our alliance, you must talk to Crooked Star, Leopard Fur told him. She was uneasy about making a decision like this behind Crooked Star's back. He was still clan leader. Was that a glint of amusement in Tiger Star's eyes? I see you're still loyal, he mewed. But you will be the one making choices for your clan soon. Crooked Star still has lives left, she mewed quickly, though she wasn't sure how many. She didn't want the other clans to think River Clan was weak. Tiger Star dipped his head. Of course, he mewed. But every leader dies eventually. Which is sad. But how else can change happen? New ideas come from young minds. Leopard Fur's tail twitched. She remembered how Tiger Star had first talked about bringing fresh energy to the clans. He was a leader now, just as he'd planned. And although she didn't feel entirely ready, there was something beguiling about the thought of standing next to him on the Great Rock, leading the clans, and bringing about real change. She wasn't ready to say goodbye to Crooked Star yet, but it warmed her pelt to know that when she did become leader, Tiger Star would be there with her. 
If, together, they could challenge the clans to think differently, it might mean River Clan would never need to go hungry again. Tigerstar was watching her. He sat down and swept his tail over his forepaws. He looked relaxed, and there was a calmness and openness in his expression that put her at ease. He clearly wanted to talk, and she was interested to hear what he would say. She sat down, too. You've spoken of change before, she mewed. What changes are you imagining you could make? I'm not thinking of changes I could make, he mewed. I'm thinking of the changes we could make. She stiffened. What did he mean? We've always been of the same mind, he went on. Other deputies and leaders are stuck in the past, but not you. You've always had your clan's future in mind. You have the foresight to realize that River Clan's future would be far more certain if it didn't rely so much on the river. Why else would you have opposed Wind Clan's return? Exactly, he understood her. Of course, he mewed. I wouldn't want to make the same mistakes Broken Star made. His whiskers twitched knowingly. Of course not. Broken Star had pushed his clan too hard. If he'd thought further ahead, he'd have been more successful. Driving Wind Clan out was rash, Tiger Star mewed. He underestimated Thunder Clan's arrogance and the weakness of his own clan. Yes. She'd missed being able to talk frankly. So much of clan leadership seemed to be about tiptoeing around other clans' needs. How refreshing, to be honest. A clan must be sure of its own strength before it challenges another. And the strength of its allies. Energy was pulsing through her paws. If only all leaders were as open as Tiger Star. I'm so glad you're not a rogue, she mewed suddenly. When you disappeared from ThunderClan, I was worried. Blue Star and Fireheart wouldn't tell anyone what had happened to you. Tiger Star bristled. Fireheart. He curled his lip. Don't you mean Rusty? That was his kitty pet name. There was rage in his mew. He's the reason I left Thunder Clan. I'm a warrior. How could I stay in a clan that respects a kitty pet? Leopardfur tilted her head in sympathy. I've often wondered how that must have felt. It was humiliating. And Blue Star treated him as though he had warrior blood. She actually trusted him. Why does Blue Star admire him so much? Leopard Fur was genuinely curious. Tiger Star scowled. Fireheart's no fool, he mewed. He knows how to exploit other cats. Kitty pets are manipulative. They've learned to use two legs. They use other cats, too. Blue Star can't see it. She still believes Fireheart has ThunderClan's interests at heart. But he only has his own. He let out a low hiss. I'd rather be in Shadow Clan and risk sickness than stay and see my leader undermined by a kitty pet. Leopard Fur narrowed her eyes. Fireheart knows how to act like a warrior, she mewed. During the fire, he took care of his clanmates when Blue Star couldn't. He's always happy to stand in for Blue Star, Tiger Star mewed acidly. But you don't think he means it, Leopard Fur suggested. Do you think he's just playing at being a true warrior? Tiger Star snarled. I'm not sure he knows what a true warrior is. But yes, I think he's clever enough to give the right impression to satisfy his ambitions. Leopard Fur mused on his words. It certainly fit with what she'd observed of the Orange Tom. Always making the right moves, and yet there was something about him she couldn't trust. He's an imposter, she said finally. Tiger Star leaned closer, his gaze sharpening. What do you mean? He wants to be honorable, but he doesn't truly understand what honor means. She flicked her tail. When our camp was flooded, he brought us prey. She paused, remembering how desperate River Clan had been then. How humiliating it had been to allow the former kitty pet to help. Thunder Clan prey. He didn't seem to realize that by feeding us, he was betraying his clan. And Graystripe helped him. Graystripe? Tigerstar's nose wrinkled as though he smelled bad fish. 
That's another reason I came to talk to you. I wanted to warn you that Graystripe's only true loyalty is to Fireheart. Leopard Fur shifted her paws uneasily. Tigerstar went on. He betrayed his clan by coming to River Clan, but he'd betray River Clan in a blink if Fireheart asked him to. Leopard Fur narrowed her eyes. I can handle Gray Stripe. I'm sure you could, Tigerstar conceded. If he were being honest with you. But have you considered that he might only have joined River Clan to act as Fireheart's spy? Giving you Thunder Clan prey. Might have been a way to let Graystripe impress Silverstream. Leopard Fur's ears twitched uncomfortably as he went on. And Silverstream could just have been Graystripe's way into River Clan. Fireheart might have planned it all. Leopard Fur's tail tip began to flick as she thought this over. She'd also wondered about Graystripe's true intentions towards Silverstream, though she'd assumed Blue Star was behind the Grey Warrior's ruse, not Fireheart. In a way, this made more sense. Think about it, Tigerstar pressed. Did Graystripe really have any feelings for Silverstream? Leopard Fur began to feel cold despite the sun. If he did, would he have buried her at Sunning Rocks and stolen her kits without telling her own clan about it? He told Mistyfoot, Leopard Fur mewed. Not until the next day. The next day? What did he mean? Had ThunderClan kept it from them for a whole day? Suddenly all the grief and fury she felt at Silverstream's death welled in her chest. Was Silverstream dead for a day before ThunderClan told us? She asked Tigerstar. He shook his head sadly. Supposedly it was Blue Star's decision. But we know who really decided, don't we? Leopardfur blinked at him. It was Fireheart? Tigerstar's eyes darkened. We can't let cats like Fireheart and Graystripe call the shots. We must keep some pride, surely. It's humiliating to see the clans being used by a kitty pet. We are supposed to be warriors. Tigerstar's words seemed to reach right to Leopardfur's belly. We could be great, he went on. We could make the clan so strong that no warrior ever goes hungry again. We can rise above petty battles. Above borders, above prey. You can see that, can't you? You can see a day when there's prey enough for everyone. When the river and the moor and the forest provide enough for every cat, and no cat has to lift a claw against another. But that can't happen so long as Fireheart and Graystripe are using us. Our weakness is their strength, and they'll take advantage of it until we have enough pride to take back control to bring true glory to the clans, to make them what they were always meant to be. Yes. Before Leopard Fur could say it, Tiger Star got to his paws. I must go, he mewed. I want to visit Tallstar, but it was important I spoke to you first. I want you to know that if Graystripe and Fireheart give you trouble, you can turn to Shadow Clan. He dipped his head respectfully. River Clan will always have a friend in Shadow Clan. She bowed her head in return, grateful. Thanks. She watched him go, her pelt fizzing. How much should she tell Crooked Star? If Graystripe really was a spy, perhaps she should watch him without worrying Crooked Star. But he needed to hear Tiger Star's warning. Blue Star and Graystripe weren't to be trusted as long as they were being used by a scheming kitty pet. She rushed back to camp. As she crossed the clearing, Graystripe trotted over from beside the fresh kill pile. His pelt was wet. He must have been fishing. He stopped in front of her, ears twitching nervously. I heard Tiger Star was here, he mewed. She narrowed her eyes. Was he worried the Shadow Clan leader had given him away? That's between me, Tiger Star, and Crooked Star, she mewed icily. You shouldn't listen to him, Graystripe urged. He can't be trusted. Really? Leopard Fur flattened her ears. What about you? Can you be trusted? Graystripe seemed to freeze. He stared at her without replying. Was that guilt glittering in his eyes? Tigerstar must be right. Yeah, she growled. I thought not. 
Swishing her tail angrily, she padded toward Crooked Star's den.